chickadees. Okay, just got home from work. Um, I am going to take another box of tomatoes. I've washed them up real good, and I'm on quarter. I'm on core them with my little handy dandy core, and cut them up in quarters and throw them in my electric roasting pan. And I'm gonna let them cook slowly all night long. And then tomorrow we are going to turn it into a big old batch of chili and can it up. So, I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. Okay, so last night I had cored and chopped up a box of those tomatoes. Um, put them in my electric roaster and let them cook all night. When I got up this morning, they were all, you know, cooked down, watery, smushy. And so I took my immersion blender, my stick blender, and I went in and blended it all up and that's what we have and then I've let it sit here and kind of simmer for just about 30-45 minutes to kind of reduce down <clears throat> so we're gonna get started with making our chili and I've, I've got the oh, let me just say this too now if I was making this for to give away as gifts or something like that I would have done a better job in like de-seeding them I would have ran them through a food mill or a, a sieve um, to get the seeds out but the seeds don't bother us <clears throat> this is totally for mine and my husband's consumption or if one of my kids want a jar of it um, this isn't you know to be perfect and impressive but just for home eating, we don't mind the seeds. The immersion blender blended a bunch of them up in there, and you won't even notice them when you get all the ingredients in. So we're going to start with the ingredients. I have browned five pounds of ground beef. Let me move the camera over here so you can see the pot and what I'm adding. Okay, I got five pounds of ground beef that I'm going to add. It's going to plop out and splatter me, so let me do this easy. After I had browned the ground beef, I just put it in my colander over the pot so I can drain off the majority of the fat because I don't want that in the chili. Okay, I'm going to mix this up in here. I say five pounds, it was six pounds. Kind of break up the pieces. Okay. Now then, the recipe also calls for six 27 ounce cans of kidney beans. Now what I am going to be using is my canned chili beans that I had made. And I did three quarts of these. And these have got chili, a lot of seasonings in them, in it. And so I'm gonna go a little bit light on my chili powder that I'm going to add to this. The recipe calls for eight tablespoons of chili powder. I think I'm going to start out with three because, like I said, these beans have got a lot of seasoning in it, including chili powder. I'm trying to see if that three quarts is enough. I have four medium onions that I chopped up in my food processor and I just had a little lonesome bell pepper sitting here that I needed to either free do something with it so I just cut up a bell pepper one bell pepper my recipe doesn't call for bell pepper but it'll be good in here too We'll make it. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm going to add 14 ounces of tomato paste. I'm using this to give it a richness and to thicken it up some. Tomato paste to a lot of recipes, it gives that cooked tomato taste. Like I don't really care to use it in my salsa, um, but in chili soups and stuff like that, to kind of get it thick, it's good. Okay, and I got six cloves of garlic that I minced. Okay, and for the seasoning, I'm using um, three tablespoons of chili powder. Now I can't remember, and I just said it, three or four tablespoons of chili powder. Um, I've got two tablespoons of onion powder, I've got eight tablespoons of salt and four tablespoons of black pepper. And this isn't um, onion powder, it's minced, dried minced onion. I'm gonna stir all this in and give it a taste and see what I think it needs, if it needs more chili powder. And, um, you know, chili is better the longer you cook it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and cook it in my roaster pan because I'm going to can these up. And since it has meat in it, it's going to can for 90 minutes. So that's plenty of time, um, cooking time to get all the seasonings and flavors mixed together. I'm going to try this. does need more chili powder and you just add your chili powder your seasonings to what you like my husband um, he don't like a whole lot of chili powder in it but he wants to taste it I like a lot but of course, I like it the way he likes it too. He just don't want the chili powder flavoring to just overpower the chili. All right, let's try this. Just a smidge more. And I know, don't come at me, I know that I should get a new spoon to taste this, but it's just me and my husband. Any germs I got in there is going to be pressure canned out because of the high heat. Okay, that's good. If I was making this for gifts or something, I would not double dip, but for just me and my husband, I am less dishes to wash. Okay, I'm going to get my jars ready and my canner ready and we'll get to canning these up. Okay, I've got my pressure canner um, heating up on the stove and like I always do, I have washed and sanitized my jars. I did it in the washing machine this morning. And then I put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven at about 170 degrees to keep them hot. And we're gonna start filling the jars. Come over here a little bit closer. 
I have put my lids in a pot and just got the water not boiling just a little simmer and then turn them off just to get them good and warm you don't have to take that step on warming your lids but when I canning hot hot packing anything I like to warm them I've been known not to but if I'm trying if I'm going step by step and doing it 100% correctly I do and I don't have any problems not warming them but it's just ingrained in me to do that I'm going to go um, half an inch to, head, to an inch head space. And then I've got a bowl of vinegar, paper towel, and I'm going to clean the rims. Very good. This is an important step. <clears throat> and I'm going to run this in here. And stir around to get any air bubbles out. Uh oh. That one's overflowing when I did that. I'm going to clean this rim up again. Okay. These are small lids. down in my camera. <clears throat> now I'm going to get two more out. Okay, I'm just going to repeat the process. I've got seven quart jars in here because my canner will hold seven quart jars and I know I'm going to need more so I'm probably going to have to get my other canner out and do some in that. done up and in my pressure canner and I've got I got the temperature up on high I'm going to put my lid on and I'm going to let this come up to pressure it's going to start steaming out of here and once I get a steady stream for about 10 minutes I'm going to put my weight on, bring it up to 10 pounds of pressure, and let it go for 90 minutes. And in the meantime, I've got a lot of chili i got to can up. So I am going to get my second um, pressure canner out and start on that one. Okay friends, this has been venting for 10 minutes. So I'm going to put the weight on. I'm going to wait till this gets up to um, 10 pounds of pressure and I'll turn the heat down and try to regulate and keep, you know, between 10 and 12 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. I don't start my timer until I get up to pressure and then I start my timer for 90 minutes. I have brought out my second pressure canner 
and I've got it in there with some water and a splash of vinegar and I'm going to go and start filling up seven more quart jars to put in this one. Okay, I have got the two canners going. See over there. So I've got 14 quarts of this chili so far. And I've got some left. It's not a whole lot. Um, but I'm going to try out. I had bought these and I hadn't used them yet. Is the Weck jars. This is like 1.05 or 1.010 or 1.10 pints, it's just a little over a pint. So I thought with what I have left, I'll fill one or two of these up and see how these work out pressure cannon. I've never used these before, so I'm really curious and I just look, they're just so pretty. And they have um, the glass lid and a gasket that goes underneath it. So we're gonna try these out and see how this does. I may have enough to do two, and I hate to run my pressure canner for two pots, but gosh, I just really want to try these out. I'll be able to do three. Mm -hmm. Try to get the chunky stuff. Try to figure out the tops on these. So it comes with these rubber gaskets and then these metal clips to clip down the lids. So we're going to see. What I'm doing here. Let's 
assuming you put that on. Okay. And you have these clips. I'm going to use three. These actually, when you order them, they come with two clips per jar. But from what I've researched, most people use um, three clips. So if you're planning on using these, all of them at the same time, you probably need to order some extra clips. Okay, got them all clipped down, and I'm going to sit them in my roaster pot. I've just got it down low <clears throat> so that they will stay warm until I free up a pressure canner. So I'll be back when that's done. Okay, I wanted to show y'all my second canning um, pressure canner. It's not it does not have a gauge; it has a jiggler. And this is the one that I started out with. And I want to show you. See, it does not have the pressure gauge that shows you how many pounds of pressure you have. On a jiggler, you have weights that come with it, and I've got a 10 pound weight on here. And what you do is. You want it a steady rock like this. So you kind of have to keep adjusting it. That's a little bit rockier than I like it. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. But that's how you know you're up to pressure and canning is when this jiggler starts jiggling and it makes it. You don't want it too fast. You want you don't want it. You want it um, just a. And this one is rocking just a little bit too fast. I just turned the heat down just a tad and it'll come down. Um, I recommend if you're starting out, start out with one that has the pressure gauge on top where you can actually see your pounds of pressure um, through the gauge. But um, this is how you do one that doesn't have a pressure gauge. It, it uses a jiggler. Okay, my first pressure canner is done. It went for 90 minutes. I turned the heat off and just let it come down to zero pressure on its own. I took the lid off and then just placed it loosely on there and let it sit for about another 10 minutes or so, um, just so the jars didn't get into a bad shock coming out from the hot water. And so I've got seven quarts I've gotten out here I have emptied the water out of this canner because um, it had a little softening that went on so it was kind of a rust color water so I put fresh water and vinegar in here and got it up on high and I'm going to put my wet jars in here and see how those do. I've had them sitting in my roaster pan to keep them warm. And I've only got three, but that's okay. These are wider in the, on the top. Let me show you. So I don't know. You could probably only get probably six of these in here because they're a lot wider on the top. So I've got three going. So I'm going to do my same old um, method. I'm going to bring this up. To full steam, let it steam for 10 minutes. I'm gonna put my weight on, bring it up to pressure, and I'm gonna let these go. Since these are just about a pint, I mean they're just a smidge over. It's kind of dark. Smidge over from a pint. Um, 
I'm going to let these go. I'll probably do 80 minutes. 75 minutes would be for a pint. So I think I'm going to let these go for 80. But I probably need to look that up and just see the pressure cannon um, with meat in the wet jars this size to see. But I'm thinking 80, but I will verify that. I'll Google that and um, make sure that I'm correct on this. My other canner is done. It's just sitting here waiting for the pressure to go down. And in case you don't know, on the gauge, it goes all the way down to zero pressure, and then this pops down. Which on this one, let me get down there. See, it's still up. Oop, it just, well, I touched it and it went down. Um, I didn't force that down. It was already ready to go down because I just barely touched it and it popped down. So this has got down to zero pressure. I'm going to take the jiggler weight off. And I'm going to open it and just kind of set it like that. I'm going to let it sit here for about 10 minutes um, before I take the jars out. So I'll be back with you when the weight jars are done so we can see what that looks like. Okay, friends. My pressure canner is done. It's, it's come down to pressure. And we're going to look see what these weight jars look like. Smells like chili. Well, this don't really. Oh no. Okay, your jar holder don't really. Shoot. I see two bad things. I'll bring you over here and let you see. Mm. I didn't do something right. But let me show you. Oops. Okay. Um, this one you can see the rubber is not on the rim. It's falling over to the side. This one looks okay. And the same thing with this one. The rubber came off. It's down here. It's not on the rim good. So I know that those are not going to have a good seal. So I need to practice on that. Uh oh, it's dark. Um, trying to get some stuff. So, I know those two are going to fail, and that's fine. I'll put them in the refrigerator and we'll eat them one night this week. Um, so, I need to learn about this on the seal. I thought I had it all centered and right, but obviously I didn't, so I'll have to do some research on that. But um, the one that I feel like will seal, when it gets all cooled down, I'll test it out and make sure. And another thing I can tell is the, this one and this one I know is not going to get a good seal because the rubber has come. See, it's hanging way down low. But this one is still bubbling after I took it out of the pressure canner. That looks like it's got a good seal on it. And these two are not bubbling. So that's definitely a fail. But that's okay. You live and you learn.